Welcome to the Counseling Tutor Podcast, the must listen to podcast for students of counseling and psychotherapy. Here are your hosts, Rory Lees Oaks and Ken Kelly. Hello, I'm Rory, and with me, as always, is Ken. How are you today, Ken? I, I'm exceptionally well. I've I've really been uh, doing some self care lately, and uh, this is episode 165 of the Counselling Tutor Podcast. We're glad you joined us, and self care is kind of a theme that runs through today's podcast. We've got three different sections. We start off with what we call our student check in, where we look at what might be happening in counselling training right now, and in that we're going to be uh, looking into self care in online PD groups. So if your personal development group has moved to an online group, how do you take care of yourself in that? Then we move on to the counselling digital revolution. That's where we recognise that technology is now part of how therapy is delivered and received by our clients. And there we're going to be speaking about safety in online therapy. And then in practice matters where we uh, dip our toe into what we need to look at as a, a, pra- a practicing practitioner, we're going to be looking at the ethics of self care. So let's start off those students, Rory, personal uh, development groups or PD groups that, that as they are known, uh, some of them have moved online, and we need to, I guess, think differently of how we take care of ourselves in those groups. Yes, absolutely, and I and I'm sure that tutors who are listening to this have thought long and hard before they've they've run uh, PD groups online. As someone who's uh, who's who's run a fair few PD groups in my time, um, there are so many there's so many moving parts and so much to think about when you're when you're working with other people's process. They sometimes referred to as process groups. And if you're wondering if you're listening to this, maybe you, you you're doing a level two or an introduction. You think, well, what's what's a PD group? Well, part of training to be a therapist is to gain insight into self and also to to be able to develop the ability to challenge others and, and be inquiring of others processes and quite quite um clearly a pd group or quite straightforwardly a pd group is where the students usually sit in a circle it's facilitated by a tutor and they they process what's going on for themselves they speak about their own processes and and how they are um, how they experience others. It's a unique um, environment where an, an environment you, you don't get replicated in any other walk of life, I don't think. And it's an opportunity to actually address someone in the group and say, this is how I experience you. This is how I see you. And for that person to think, is that how I am? Or, or, or to say, actually, this is what's going on for me. It's it's not quite therapy, but it's not far from it. And it's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very kind of narrow line to walk, which is why when you take a PD group into an online environment, there's so many things that you need to think about. And certainly, if you're a student undertaking a PD PD group, and you sat at home, you may want to think about how you can take care of yourself. You know, what are you going to do right after the PD group finishes? Are you going to go for a walk, a little time of reflection? Maybe just just take some time to let that process sink in. It's called a process group <clears throat> for a reason. It's because you're working with your own processes. And it may be that you're thinking and, and processing how the theory you've learned actually maps into your own life. I think that's one of the most powerful um changes arbiters of change in an individual's training in counseling where they look at the theory and they think oh gosh this is what's happening in my life there's a theory to explain why i feel like i am and if you're doing this in a facilitated group in a building you know you've got time to decompress you leave you may go and get yourself a coffee you may get in your car and you drive home when you're working when you're doing this in your own home I really do think that you need to have some kind of little decompression plan. You know, divers who dive deep in waters, they have decompression. So they don't pop their heads out of the water instantly. They have to come up in a stepway until they reach the surface. And I think decompression is a really good term for for coming out of a PD group, certainly if you're at home. Have some form of strategy of something that's going to gradually return you back to the life that you're living 
And uh, I'm sure that tutors are going to be very thoughtful on this. They're going to have specific contracting. If they're doing PD groups online, they're going to be aware of students who are having particular difficulties. But I'll be honest, it does bring a specific challenge to students' self-care because <clears throat> you are taking this processing at home and when, of course, the, the PD group finishes and the computer switches off, you're on your own. Yeah, it is. It's... it's, it's... <clears throat> Yeah, I think we've got frogs in the throats today, Rory, jumping all over the I place. Know, me too, me too. Um, I think self, self-care is vitally important. PD groups are super, super powerful, super powerful. Um, uh, speak to students that are graduating and leave, leaving their PD group. Uh, speak to students that have graduated, gone into practice and practice for, for some years. They will remember back to their PD group. There's so much growth that can happen within a PD group. But a, a PD group can be a really challenging place as a, a as well uh, and we've certainly seen uh, comments on our Facebook uh, group where students will share frustrations and challenges that come up in in PD groups such as such said this and that made me feel like that um, and if you're interested in being part of that conversation jump on Facebook put in counseling tutor that's our group come and join tens of thousands of like-minded people uh, and, and be part of that group and that conversation um, but the, the thing about a PD group is if somebody maybe mentions something, brings something up that, that kind of stirs an emotion in you, that's where the learning is. It's not about they did this and they did that. It's about I felt this and I felt that. It is personal development group, not people, other people development group. Um, so it, it, it can be a challenging place at the best of times. But I think taking it from an in-person group and maybe being forced to do that digitally, maybe over video software, brings with it its own challenges. It's going to change. And I, I think I, I would echo what you've said, Rory, that there needs to be, that change needs to be acknowledged by the group. In a way, that group is not the same group it was. I understand it's the same people. But by moving it online, it will have a different dynamic because a PD group is, is a living, breathing entity. Having facilitated a good few myself and Rory, you facilitated a number of them. They really are. The group itself becomes something. It's a living, breathing entity. And when you take that and put it online, it's going to act differently. The group as a whole, I'm talking here. So new contract when working online from a tutor's perspective, really good idea. And acknowledging, saying, you know what, I recognize we're not set together in a room. This is online. It is different. I can't see the person full, uh, the full body language of the, the person sitting in front of me. I can't put my head down and look at look at the people's shoes uh, which is pretty common in a pd group is to kind of look yes. down bow your head down look at the shoes you can't do that anymore if you think about how we react over uh, over video conferencing software like zoom or whatever you choose to use we kind of look forward all the time because we feel it's polite to do so maybe contracting uh, within your group that it is okay to maybe drop your head down how does it work if somebody doesn't have a webcam? Do, do they still feel part of the group? Does it change the group dynamics if you can't see that person? These are things to work with. And the nice thing I think about uh, the challenges that come up within a PD group is they all lead to personal development. Because it's not as it was does not mean you can't have personal development. The very nature that it changes and brings stuff up for you is great learning within your personal development group but always with a focus on your self-care, your self-care. Because within a personal development group, as you quite rightly said, Rory, it is not therapy, but it can be therapeutic. Mm -hmm. You can find yourself bringing stuff. You can feel emotions coming up and being shown within that group. How do Absolutely. you manage that? How do you manage and keep yourself safe within that environment? So that's what we're kind of focusing on here. Yes, absolutely. And and it, it is a whole new sphere. You know, the 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 online teaching is something in certainly in counselling that no one would have ever envisaged before um before we, we found ourselves in this COVID um society, if you like. So so I think everybody's finding the way. 
but I'm sure that tutors are very, very thoughtful of this. I'm sure that when when they sit and meet with colleagues, they're very thoughtful of how 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 students may react. And you know, one of the things that you don't get in, in an online environment that you do get in um, a face to face is um, the, the student that hangs back at the end of a PD group. We used to have our PD groups in the and in the, the last piece of work mainly because you do the theory the skills and then if there's anything building up that came into awareness for a student they had the decompression you see i'll get the decompression in the decompression of the pd group to be able to vent that out and and to and to explore it uh, but occasionally when most of the students went home you'd have the, a student to hang back and and they'd be a little bit um, upset or a little bit um distressed and you'd have to take a few moments just to ground them and help them re re-engage into the world they're going back to and i'm sure that that um within contracting a lot of tutors will have that built in so it may be that as part of the um contract a tutor will say you know if anybody just needs a word um i'll, I'll be around and i'll 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 be at the end end of end of the group it has to be thoughtful, and they can just do a quick one to one and just check and see if everybody's okay. But you know, it, I I think if I was a tutor nowadays, I would have a whole lot more to think about when when conducting any teaching online than I ever had when I was doing it face to face in terms of safety and protection. Yeah. Um. And I think that we're we're learning as we go. I know that colleagues who teach online are saying that we're literally learning as we go. But I do think I do think that PD groups online, the safety lives in the contract. Yeah, definitely. And um, look to your support structure, your your network that you have. So Rory has already painted that picture of you come out of what could be quite an emotionally moving PD session, and you can leave with any range of emotions. Pick an emotion, you can be leaving yeah, yeah. the PD group holding that emotion. Now the thought of instantly being faced with maybe your family maybe chores maybe something that you have to do um it, it, it's it's challenging so rory's already spoken about that that decompression and maybe there's an opportunity to explore what your support system looks like maybe you have a peer that you're well connected with on your course that um that you can touch base with and just just chat for five minutes after the pd session just to again decompress something to change gear i mean at the very least if you're in a face-to-face -face college university learning center environment and having a pd group and if it is held at the end of the session you at least maybe have the travel time that you would have to to get back where you can clear your mind so many of our students used to say you know what when i drive back after us uh, our uh, training sessions I don't listen to the radio because I find that it interrupts my process and I like to to, to kind of deprocess and kind of change gear as it were before I am back into my I'm doing real world but I'm doing the uh, inverted commas in the air um, the, the the real world and this you don't get the, the that online you kind of instantly Close, close the window and now the real world is back. How do you make that transition? And we're not here to tell you how to do it. We're here to, to challenge you to, to have a think about how you're going to do that for yourself. And I like your uh, suggestion, Rory, of a walk that mm. my training is, I go to my training, then we have our PD group, and then I have a 15 minute walk. Nobody talked to me, nobody bothered yes. me. Kids don't come near me until I come back from my walk. And that, that's a decompression. Or maybe you journal. But think about it because that self-care is so, so important. And so much uh, comes up from PD work. If you've, if you've been in a group, you know that already. Yeah, and maybe have your social media switched off um, because I think it could be quite easy to vent out um, onto social media mm. and it might, might not be, that might not be terribly useful in the long term. So, so maybe just be thoughtful of that. Um, and uh, and 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 really take care of yourself. I, I do think that although this is very different and it has its challenges, it does actually reflect the learning that students need, that you students need, in a world where you may be practicing online. Because all training, if you think about it, is meant to replicate what happens in the real world of counselling. 
And the real world of counselling more predominantly is either a blended practice or an online practice. So even if it feels different and uncomfortable, actually what you're doing is you're equipping yourself for the work that you're going to go into and the world where it's practised. So, um, you know, as, as someone who's sat in many uncomfortable PD groups as a student, I have to say that it equipped me very well for the world that I went into. Well, there you have it. That is our student check-in. And as we move away from uh, the, the personal development group, we look at the counselling digital revolution. Uh, that is kind of acknowledging that technology is now part of therapy in delivery, in receiving, and indeed training, as we have just covered. And in counselling digital revolution, we're going to look at uh, the safety when working online. Digital counselling revolution. Well, as, as I said in a lot of podcasts in this season, safety is really, really essential. And certainly it's brought a whole new dimension to that word when we think of working online. And, you know, in the last section, we talked about PD groups. In this section, we're talking about what happens when you work online and what safety considerations you need to think about. So how, let's start off by just analysing or just having a little think about how different working online is to working face to face. The client comes in to your therapy room. The space is yours. It's your therapy room. Even if you hire it or in an agency, you own the space there as the therapist. The client comes in, you know, the door shuts, the therapy con- progresses or, or commences. It's, it's a, it's a enclosed captured space that you can support the clients in on online therapy almost certainly the client is going to be having therapy in their own home. And in that case, you need to be very, very thoughtful of how to keep the client safe. And I I know there's been a number of observations in the Facebook group saying that some of the techniques aren't really what you would think a counsellor would do. But what about being thoughtful of noises in the background? So you're working with the client and you can hear maybe an angry voice or a noise in the background. What would you do in a therapy room if you heard a noise outside in the street? You'd probably acknowledge it and, and say, well, it sounds like there's, there's something going on out there. But you wouldn't be thinking in terms of safety because they're outside your physical environment. But if you hear an angry voice, you know, maybe you're working with a client on the phone. Maybe you're working with them face-to-face online and you hear an angry voice. How do you react to that? Because if that's coming from their house, what would you do? So part of safety is thinking about when you're working with a client about doing a good assessment of of their situation and what difficulties they may be facing. That's absolutely essential. And, you know, I will hold my hands up. It's not something we'd usually do in counselling. And I I think a a lot of voices are saying, well, this isn't what counselling is. But online counselling is completely different. So, you know, having a safe word, I know that a lot of therapists um, may have you know, a a safe word that the client uses in case someone comes home unexpectedly. You know, they may have put the space to have therapy. They may not be telling their partner, which is fine, or their children, which is fine. And all of a sudden, halfway through a therapy session, partner comes home, he or she comes home early. Um, What do you do in that situation? So I think if that is a concern and the client voices it, Again, you have to contract and negotiate it. It's a big part of safety. And I know some therapists who hear a noise in the background and say, is it okay for you to talk? And the client says no. And the contract is, well, we'll speak again next week. Yeah. And the important words there and the contract is, and we we covered contracting in depth in episode 164 uh, of the Counseling Tutor podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, uh, do yourself a favor and go and listen to it because we cover contracting and how different contracting is when working online. And non-maleficence means we do no harm. We have a, a duty of care to to provide. We, to, you, you, so often we say we, we, we provide a safe and secure environment where you can bring, uh, bring what you have to say. I've, I've had that on my own website. But as Rory has just pointed out, 
they're not in your environment anymore. You do not have control of the environment where the client is receiving their therapy. And as a result of that, it's difficult to hold that safety. It's not impossible and we need to contract around it. We need to assess around that to understand uh, what the client's situation may be. And we also need to educate the client in order for them to stay safe within your uh, confined space of your therapy room in face-to-face -face therapy, you've taken care of confidentiality. You've made sure that, that, that nobody can see in the window to see who's being uh, counseled. You've made sure that the room is adequately soundproof, that it, you can't be overheard from outside. Um, we cannot presume that the client will be in a soundproofed environment that can't be overheard from a different room. And it's about educating and, and having that discussion before therapy starts, explaining you may be overheard from a different room, you need a, a safe space you can work, educating them in terms of, of technology they can use to minimize that, such as wearing headphones that have got a built-in microphone where they don't have to speak so loudly and there's no sound coming out of the, the speakers of their system that may be overheard from another room. Or as you pointed out, Rory, somebody may be unexpectedly uh, r arriving home early about having in your contract what you would do if some a, a commotion did start uh, uh, in in the background. What would you do if an, an argument suddenly uh, uh, broke out? You heard somebody come in in the background. Suddenly there was an argument and and the connection was lost. What do you do as a therapist? That the that is the client at risk, and this is all dealt with before therapy starts. What what how you work? Absolutely, and there's there's a few little kind of idiosyncrasies that you might not think about with online therapy. So for, for instance, if you're using a, a, a computer as we are today, um, it, computers have a tendency to have an, what's called a, a volume gain, an automatic volume gain. Uh, we have ours switched off because we don't want any noises outside to come into the podcast. So we turn ours off. But what can happen is if you, if you're working, say in your home and working online and then someone walk past shouting it might feel to the client like that person was in your room. And again, that could be, well, this is someone else in the room. So I think that, you know, if you are working online and, and you, you can hear, you, you can actually, you, there's, there's noises outside, is to articulate and say, oh, that's just something outside uh, of, of, of the room. Um, because it can be quite easy for clients, if, certainly if you're doing all, uh, telephone work, not to know where you are that you're a voice on the phone. So I think, you know, being aware of noises or voices that might just be, be outside. If you're, I'd say, sat in your home and someone walks past speaking loudly, um, to just say, oh, it's okay, that that is actually someone outside. They're not in, they, they, it's not in the room, it's, it's, it's okay. Because safety goes two ways. I mean, you know, if you're a client and you can hear someone talking in your therapist's room, you think, well, who else is in there? Yep. And you really, you really got to think this through. And unfortunately, modern technology is so good that the 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 the, the, the microphones will pick up noises as loud as the person who's speaking. So as Ken said, get yourself a headset, um, and that's that's super useful. I think a headset's absolutely essential because the mic's near your mouth. You've got the earphones in. And, and you can really hear the client and there's less distractions. Yeah. All adds to safety. It does. And, and it's educating the client. It's a, a, a correct contracting assessment, uh, correct education, giving the client the information they need. And there's, there's, it's, it's tricky. We've mentioned this before. It's so tricky. There's things that you don't even consider. Um, for example, what about the Alexa that sat in the room? What about the Siri that sat in the room? These are listening devices. They're on and listening all the time. Now, as a therapist, if you've done a course on online and telephone counseling, you're not going to have one of those devices anywhere in your room because it is a listening device. It is a microphone that is collecting data. We know this uh, 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 all the time uh, so that is a direct breach of confidentiality potentially we don't know how that uh, uh, data is used and I'm not insinuating it is used but we don't know and the same we need to be educating our clients as well you know 
don't have your, your, your session in a room where you've got an Alexa or a Siri. You don't want a big microphone that's connected to a, 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 co- a company that may be collecting your data when you are sharing uh, your, your innermost turmoil or whatever you're going through. It, it, it is tricky. And again, it's training. Do the adequate training. Absolutely. And to help you with this, I produced a handout. Sometimes Ken refers to it as a super duper handout. A super duper duper handout. Super duper duper <laughs> handout. Just with some points to think about if you are um if you are an online therapist and 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 safety is front of mind, which it should be. And to get that, you go to counselingtutor.com. go to the podcast tab on the website, look at podcast one six five, and that handout is ready for you to download safety considerations in online therapy so important and really has to be front of mind indeed and uh, if you are considering training in online and telephone therapy uh, counseling tutor have a course uh, a certificate in online and telephone counseling uh, i can share with you that we have over one thousand reviews from peers who have completed this course uh, that you can kind of go and look at and see how they found the course Uh, the course has been awarded quality check training recognition by the national counseling society and counseling tutor is a recognized acto training provider as well and uh, the if if you want more information on that counselingtutor.com has the information on how to join our online and telephone counseling course wow so much to consider really rory isn't there this this uh the digital revolution brings with it i guess some a a very very steep learning curve it's got its benefits but it also certainly has its challenges and new considerations so let's park that move away as we go into practice matters where today we're going to be looking at the ethics of self-care practice matters Yes, and, and those of you who have been listening very carefully will probably have detected a theme in this podcast uh, regarding self-care, safety, and generally looking after yourself and your clients, offering the best service for your clients. And, you know, in this part, I want to, I want to talk about something that I don't think is often addressed enough, and that is looking after ourselves. And a lot of people are surprised that certainly if you're a member of the BACP, the British Association of Counselling and Psychotherapy, one of the many ethical bodies that oversee good practice in counselling and psychotherapy, that self-care is actually an ethical imperative. To be an ethical practitioner, you have to consider your self-care. And it's actually in the BAC for ethical framework as care of self as a practitioner. And he starts off by saying we will take responsibility for our own well-being as essential to sustain a good practice with our clients. And it goes on to saying, uh, taking precautions to protect your physical safety, your psychological and physical health, seeking professional support and services as the need arise, and are keeping a healthy balance between our work and other aspects of life. And I think that last statement is one where we could make a start when working online, because online Working online demands more of us than working face-to-face. And as, as Ken and myself can attest to, because when we do the podcast, when we, if we were to meet face-to-face and do the podcast, there would probably be a lot less to think about than doing it online because we, we have the technology to consider. We have any slight delays that we need to consider. We're working with computer screens. We're working predominantly on our own. And that that sometimes has to be acknowledged, and it should be acknowledged if you're a therapist. And in fact, um, speaking to online therapists, they sometimes limit the amount of clients they have. Uh, I was speaking to um, one of one of my colleagues, and she was saying that where she'd usually have clients back to back, she she has a fifteen or twenty minute break between clients when working online because it is so it is so demanding managing the technology seeing someone online actually actually is harder harder work so we need to be thoughtful about that and i would suggest that if you are an online practitioner that you really think about that and just reflect you know is it more is it is it more demanding than working face to face and if it is what are you going to put in place to look after yourself yeah it's certainly differently demanding and and it feels it's like many things 
Um, you need to, to kind of get fit. And working online is one of those things. And Rory and myself, we, we, we spend a lot of time online. We run a counseling tutor. is an online-driven business. So we spend most of our time online. And we become online fit. Eventually, the technology vanishes, becomes less cumbersome. Um, but even st- so, I mean, this morning, uh, as we, we, we record our podcast in the morning, um, and uh, this morning setting it up, it was, hold on, let me just get the technology right. Let me just click this. Let me just uh, push on that. It, it, it's very, very different. One of the things that is maybe not known is that of screen fatigue. So Ooh. just by sitting in front of a screen, the, 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 uh, the quality of the light that radiates out from a screen um, causes fatigue. It, 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 makes, it wears us down. We have to consider that, uh, that self-care. And, uh, you know, even if you're not working online, because um, uh, maybe some of our colleagues are still managing to do some face-to-face hours, we, we need to also look at the, the kind of situation. We're speaking at the moment during the pandemic uh, lockdown across many places in, 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 in the world. It's been tightened and, 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 and loosened as we speak, and it's, it's different news every day. Things are changing every day. How are we taking care of ourselves during this time? Because we're human, and uh, we're being pulled and pushed in many different directions. It's so, so challenging. And, of course, a great way of uh, of taking care of self is to journal and students on counseling courses are required to journal in fact journals are sometimes uh, required as part of the uh, um, the the evidence that the to, to kind of demonstrate self self-development during the process but journaling is a very um, cathartic I guess process where you can kind of pour out information very often as you know, as counsellors, we can't speak about our jobs. We can't finish our day's work and then go to our family and say, oh, I had a terrible day at work. This person said that and that person said this and this is what happened. We can't speak about it because we're holding confidentiality. We can maybe take that to our, our, our supervisor, uh, and but maybe that is once a month or once so often. So how do you deal with that at a time that is kind of challenging anyway, uh, where you may be kind of working in a different medium, adding additional challenges to that, maybe having to go online. There's a lot going on. There really is a lot going on. And I recognize that both Rory and myself recognize that many colleagues at the moment, uh, including myself, Rory, I, I, not that long ago, I was feeling the stresses and I needed to, to step mm. back for a little while. That self-care is, 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 is as important as it's ever been, maybe we need to just take a moment to refocus on that and think about what we have in in our kind of self care lineup. Are we doing any meditation, mindfulness, yoga, going for walks, a little bit of exercise? Are we sleeping okay? Just looking after us because if we're not there, the therapy stops. We need to be there, and we need to be okay to be there for our clients. Absolutely, and this is. Is a, a a really demanding, um, really demanding business, if you like. We get, um, we you know, we 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 meet clients with very difficult lives, difficult presentations, hear very difficult things. So it's super essential that we um, look after ourselves and practice self care. And it is an ethical imperative. And there's no better way to do that than, of course, supervision. Or, as I found recently, my own personal therapy. I recently went back to my own personal therapy, and I found that incredibly beneficial just to kind of explore, um, just explore aspects of my life um, uh, it, during, during, during a transition period, you know, in terms of COVID. So really, really do take care of yourself. And what, what an episode. We start, self-care has been a theme of this episode. We started off with self-care in online PD. Then we talked about uh, safety in online therapy, and now we finished on the ethics of self-care. So as always, if you're in the digital revolution, please stay grounded and stay safe. Take the stress out of your counselling studies and get the support of Rory and I by joining us in the Counselling Study Resource. Counselling Study Resource, or CSR for short, is the world's most comprehensive assignment guidance and study support resource for students just like you of counselling and psychotherapy. See how Counselling Study Resource can help you. Visit counsellingtutor.com.
counsellingtutor.com. That's counsellingtutor.com. Thank you for listening to the Counselling Tutor Podcast. Find the show notes for this episode on our website at www.counsellingtutor.com. Thank you.